All right, folks, we're uh, we're live. Is your mic muted? All right. So we're uh, here at the uh, Wood uh, Wood Turning Tool Store booth at SWAT, and we got Mike Mahoney on the little mini lane. Going to do uh, some thread chasing. So right now he's setting up to. Uh, I'm going to make the female thread for this piece. Going to make the female. Thread. You got a better. You got a better picture. You can get a lot closer though, right? Uh, yeah, in that red bag, Steve, my, the green bag inside the red bag. Green bag, yeah, you're going to have to pull all the handles out, Steve. Pull the whole bag out. Sorry, we're trying to get a spindle gout going. It's not going to have a handle. That'll work. I don't need a handle either. You gotta show the handle. Oh, there you go. All right. Just there, gonna make this a little deeper. Your double-ended resolver there, Mike. Okay. Mike is using a uh, spindle gout to clear it away. We have five people watching. Online. Oh, oh, yeah. How yeah. do these people watch them live? So, typically, you always make the female part first because you want to size the male to the female. Uh, so, the, the reason you want to do the female first is because you have a known diameter. Uh, and so, uh, when you make the male, you're going to oversize the male to fit into the, the, the female slot. And if you can't get it just right, you just keep going over the male thread until it falls. Oh, does he need a light? It's a good way to, to do it. That's because yeah, measuring that, yeah, you're open getting that it door. just right. But you, that doesn't give you any, any room for messing up. So uh, that's why we would probably that's it, Steve. make the female first. Steve, that's it. Um, in order to start any thread, you have to put a chamfer on the front or a soft rounded surface. Otherwise, you won't start. Yeah, nice. Thank you. That'll work. So, on our case in here, this is the female end, this is the male end. So, we're obviously doing the female first. So, I, when, I, when I hit the surface here, this, I want this to be parallel with the bed because it's going to want threads to go through smoothly. Um, and then I probably would like to strike the wood somewhere around center. Maybe the, the, the top of the chaser would hit the top, right here in the center. And then before I start the thread, I'm going to kind of make sure the chaser moves freely on the tool rest. So there's no glint, no stickiness, no, no bump in here. Because when I, when I do finally hit the wood, the chaser has to travel all the time. It has to move. If it doesn't, you just keep it this, is, this could be a texturing tool if you want. If you just want to jam it in there, you just have a groove. But we want a spiral. So we're going we're gonna to put a spiral in the wood. And I start back a little bit here. And notice I'm at an angle. Uh, when I finish the thread, I will be parallel with the bed of the uh, lay bed or the waist. I'm going to start over here at an angle and start an acne thread. Before I start, I'll kind of get just a feel of how things are going. And I've got to match the rotation, which is about 500 RPMs in this scenario. And uh, one other thing I've got to point out to you, I put a stop back in there. I'll, I'll, I'll cut that again just to show you. This, this is an area where the thread is going to run out because if I can't let it run into the back of that, of the interior of the box. line here, then it, it's, 
has a big groove and way behind the line. So I could run that safety over that surface without hitting the interior. Okay. Just try every, off. every thread typically would have something associated with that stop. Just pull it down. Turn it down. Not helping? No, it's blowing out a little bit. Is, is it hurting you? Okay. A little so, better. So here I go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically put a spiral in the wood. Looks like I'm going gonna, gonna to put a little tamper back in there. It looks a little sharp to me. There you go. That little song and dance with the wood to make sure my face is moving freely. Back up the tool rest a bit. I struck the wood. It's not as good. It was good when you could see the other side. So I've got one or two lines in there, and they're in a spiral because I can feel it tugging the facer up into the into the piece. So now I won't cut, but I'll show you what happens. It travels. So the, the threads that I've already made, if I if I take the chaser and start moving it towards me, will start digging further deep into that wall. And eventually, and also notice my chaser is horizontal. So the chaser wants has to be horizontal here because if you tilt it like this or like this, you change the fit of the thread. So instead of a 16, you might get a 17. I've never done a really good with chaser. That is going to be a fairly good thread right there. And you're done when everything's perpendicular to the bedways and the interior of the threads, or the, the, the top part of the thread, looks just like uh, the thread chaser itself. A pointed piece of wood or uh, spiral. That's a, that's a good thread there. Um, now, if, if I had the wood, I would fit a male to go to there. That's as easy as it is. What's that, Cindy? Yeah, a little bit, exactly. I, I don't like how the, when I instruct this, I don't, I don't say 1,000 of an inch or 2,000 of an inch, because I don't like that. I know it's but I just, the, the real size that you need is the interior uh, diameter of that, uh, and that's hard to find. But there is a tool for that, but what I do is I know this diameter here, and I oversize the middle just a bit, and then I put a thread on it, and if it's too tight, I thread it again until it finally fits. So that's a good way to think about it, because it gives you time to, to work into it. It's like you're just practicing for the big show. So let's do that one more time. And then I'll set up for a, a mail thread, and then um, uh, we'll let some other folks try it. So I'm going to just erase those. The really good threading wood. I've never, I've never threaded, uh, here's my chamfer. I've never threaded a uh, pair, but it's, a, it's an excellent threading wood. There's my stop. And I, I didn't mention much about the RPMs, but the RPMs typically on something of this diameter, 500 would be fine. The other way I like to look at it, if you can see a thread on your spindle somewhere, like on my legs, I can see a thread on this side. The right speed is just before it gets blurry. So I could follow with my, my eye that thread. Before it gets blurry, that's the right speed. As you, as you turn it up. This is a belt driven leg, so it doesn't give me a readout. So I, I've got to go with the slowest RPM. And if, if, if this was too fast, I would just have to work with it. Yeah, I got a good thread there. Bring it around. Pull it out before I hit the end there. Like to keep the top of the chaser clean. Now, um, that's a good thread. So, in the old days, this this was not done this way. Let me uh, let me step around. I'm, I'm done coming on this side. So. In uh, in in Europe, this this was not this was not taught that way, um, and still in America, people are teaching this tool the old-fashioned way. I'll call it the old-fashioned way. The colonial, I don't know what you call it, 
but I had to go to Europe to learn how to thread chase because nobody in North America knew how to thread chase. Uh, so I went to England to learn from a master, I believe. I won't tell you his name. But while I learned from him, he was constantly putting roadblocks in front of me to make it hard, hard for me to learn. And that's typically how it's done. There's an apprenticeship program everywhere you go in Europe. And, and, uh, so you have to learn from somebody, and it depends on who you learn from as, as to how fast you progress. Um, but in the trade, there would be a 100-foot lathe, literally, and there'd be six men on, on one lathe, and the tool rest was one solid piece, and it went down the line. And it didn't have the ability to be manipulated like that. So what they had to do is leave the tool rest where it was, and they would have had this arm brace. You remember the arm brace, yeah? Um, uh, and it was a, like a hook on the on their belt, and they could bring it up. And it looked kind of looked like the chaser, and it it had a hook right here. And now they would thread chase like this. So th think of this as the hook, but he would have a chaser here, a female chaser, and he, that's how it was done. And so when I was there, there learning how to do it, I go, well, why, why would I want this, that hook, when I could do this? Well, the answer was, you can't do it that way. And only because you've never tried it that way. So when I went, went back home, I, I did this and got rid of that. Because if you have that, that's one other piece of the complications of the tool so throw it away but it's still taught that way today and it's still taught by some american folks but as more of a historical perspective i hope because if nine out of ten of my students who would learn this will all thread chase on their first try because of the simplicity of how easy this is to do let's quickly just put a thread on the outside of this um, but uh, people do make this this hard it doesn't have to be hard so I'm just gonna put a nice true edge out here. And then I'm gonna put a stop. I'm gonna put a stop over here somewhere. So it's gonna so slow. So that's that's our stop. So that's this gap here is where we're going to stop the thread. Then on the front here, I'm going to put a chamfer. That's our lead-in, our lead-in. Something soft. Now, this particular chaser is designed differently than most. This I call this a whale tail. And most of the time when you're doing male threads, there'd be a wall up here. Like if you're making a, a box or something, there'd be a wall here. And you'd have to take a, a chaser up to that wall and pull it out. So you'd have to build a, a stop just before the wall so you can run that thread chaser up to the wall and pull out. Because if you don't pull out, you're just gonna strip out your threads. But with this whale tail, there's a, when you finish up, you can actually get close to that wall and extend it past the wall because the chaser's been indented here. So that allows you to get kind of a, a better thread at the end. So let's start this. I'm gonna back this up here, pass, get it, get it back in here yeah. so do that there's my song and dance i'm kind of just pushing that across the wood and notice i'm at an angle like this i'll put a thread on the front uh, let, let's just do that real quickly that's moving really fast because the rpms that are meeting the tracer is much faster than 500 rpms out here so now I have a spiral in the wood. Watch what happens. I'm not going to cut. I'm just going to stick the under part of the chaser into the spiral, and it, and it takes it right across. That tells me I've got a thread there. Not a groove, but a, a thread. How does it make that uh, all the way through? Once I got it into that spiral, it's going to create that thread. So here we go. Just keep that acne thread going. And eventually those threads will push me up farther into the wall, under the surface. A little vibration there. Gonna 
break out the thread, but the thread's good. Uh, it's gonna have some broken tops on it just because the wood isn't taking the thread. Uh, but up here in the front, it certainly works good. To mitigate that issue, I would probably take some paste wax and just keep going over to lubricate that surface to keep the break up. But uh, that's pretty much how, how a male and female is done. Uh, okay, you said 500 is good for this size. What do you mean by that? So, uh, so when the work's really small, um, you can start um, uh, decreasing the speed. Okay. As it gets bigger, you have to increase the speed because this point coming back to it, the same point takes a it has to come, it takes longer. So you have to increase the speed. Otherwise, um, or did, I, did I get that backwards? What did I say? Increase or decrease? You, you said, said increase, increase if it did larger with the diameter. Larger diameter yes. because the circumference is more. Yeah. So you have to speed it up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what I said. But, but, yeah. So that's never, how it's done. Yeah, so the larger it gets, the harder it's going to become. It's really difficult. And the course of the thread is, so when you're using really, these are 16 TPIs, uh, so that's a fairly fine thread. But it's perfect for wood turners because um, we are not usually threading large objects. We're usually putting a lid on something, a little box or something like that. So 16 is good. But if you wanted to put a really coarse thread on something, which there's certain reasons for doing that, uh, you, softer timbers might work a little better. Uh, not every wood threads well. So um, coarser threads, maybe softer woods. If you're working with softer woods, go to a coarser thread. Uh, and the reason these are 16s as compared to 14s or 12s or 20s or 22s is the 16s is a great thread to learn with. Uh, it's just a good all-around uh, size. Yeah. Any any questions, anybody? Anybody want to try a male thread? You want to try a male thread? Kind of All the hard, dense woods like uh, rosewoods and things like that. Those are those talk to my are union. Right yeah. Talk to my union about all the lights. Hey, Todd, you know the way I can do it. Yeah, in the drawer. I can hold it if you, if you need it some more. There, there should be a knockout bar that I use on Tommy Bar. Here, give me a minute. I thought he was through. I can hold it. I thought he was finished. So, I can hold it. Okay. Just tell me if I'm doing it correctly. I'm going to put in a different piece of wood. Now. Doing something more difficult. No, something easier. <laughs> you guys still filming? Yep. Oh, wow. We got uh, 10 people uh, somewhere watching. Wow. How many we got online? I don't know. This is mesquite. Where is it? I know this thread well because uh, I've already done it. Oh, we may not have it in here. Because we're this is wall. This is mesquite. Mesquite. I threaded it earlier and it threaded fine. Well, it's handy for me because I have mesquite. I'll look it up on yeah, the website. Oh, there you go. In Hawaii, we call it kiabe. Kiabe. You got tons of different acacias over there. I think koa is an acacia as well. So when you're doing threads, is it, a, is it better for medium to hardwood rather than softer wood? Yeah, probably, but that's there's oh. not, that's not a given. You see that little wood down there? Just slide that under that wheel. Yes. This way it kind of work way loose. Thank you. My badge. Ooh, this is going to be tough with that RPM, isn't it? You, want it, you can change the belts. So fairly quick? Yeah, yeah. Let me take a look at this wood. I'm not right, so yeah. sure that Let going so down. fast is a good idea either. I'm okay, Todd. Let's just give this a shot. I'll only do the end. Let's see what happens. Yeah, uh, I'll live with this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get it really small. Let's get it round. This one's got some cracks into it, so we're not gonna do it. Over, over down.
know for safety, I probably should get a rest. Just thinking about it. act like that's not even So we're gonna. The mail thread's always going to be parallel to, uh, to the bedway. We'll put a stop right here. Okay. There's our stop. Let's put a chamfer on the front. Come on over, Les. Back you up just a bit. If you want. So here's the action. Put a couple threads on the front at this angle, and then slowly take it up forward. Practice it a couple times, and I bet you get you get some. Whatever feels comfortable with your hands. I, yeah. Remember, when you hit the wood, keep it moving. And the cut, cutter part is the center line of the. Yeah, it doesn't right. have to be. He's going to have to pick up his right hand. Pick up your hand. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. It's going to be very good. Yeah, 
camper? Remember the camper? Are you ready to go? Now, I'm not even going to coach you. Yeah. going to develop it to, into a point. It looks, looks really good. Wow, Pretty is easy. that your first yeah, time? A lot, yeah, a lot, a lot easier than expected. All right. Yeah, Mike taught me online, too. Oh, wow. 30, 30, yeah, we did this. Yeah, yeah. We did that. That's right. This, this folds into that. We yeah. should have thought about that. Yeah. Or I should have thought about that. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Use the light, man. Use the light, man, now. We trust you. Okay? Make, you trust in me? I'm not very good at this. Make me look this good. This is my first day. My first day. Don't tell me you're a union. I can't. I am. Them. I am. I'm an ex-union member. Order one. Order one. Hey, come on. Oh, give me your shoulder. Come on, Slender. Oh, you want a, a, a wall? Yes. Why? You, you know how to do this? Yeah, I've, I've done Freddy, but not with this one. Uh, so, well, in order to do that, okay, let's do it right here. Do it right here. He wants a little challenge. He wants a wall in front of his, his spread. With, that, that tells me he's done this before, but this this will this will be this will be good, interesting. Oh, you took my course in promo. All right, that's right. Okay, oh, you remember that, Mike? You remember this guy? From I, do, I do. You do. So here's the only one that had cross So there's your stop. It's going to be a very short stop. Okay. So this is a challenge. There you go. So, oh, one more tip. Um, somebody asked how to uh, sharpen this. Um, there's the top of the chaser right there, that little champ, uh, little chamfer there. I take some 320 or 400, put it on the bench there, and I just rub that a new surface on there, and then it's sharp. So it's a scrape. It's a scrape. Sure. Yeah. So I'm going to pull you back here because you want to be behind the whale tail. You want to put the tool rest behind the whale tail. Okay, let's see it. Challenge. Okay. Practice, practice. Come in like this. You know that, that diameter in front of you might be too big. This guy. Might be oh, no, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Give it a try. Yeah, it is a little too big. 
Ah, you hit the ah. wall. Just don't let it travel that far. Just do a little short grip and pull it out. He did it. Hell yeah. That's all right. Hit the, hit the wall, but keep going. All right. Is that a little bit fast on the lane speed for that? No. no. That's as slow as we go. Right? That's as slow as we go. Yeah, lane, yeah probably. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three hundred. About that, that three feet at that right. size. Yeah, that's kind of my sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. And I've gone down to like 200, and this starts getting a little weird to get drunk. Yes. So you did pretty good there. It's a, that's a good challenge there to put that wall there, because typically that wall is even bigger. And if that wall was bigger, so that's what that well tells for, because you could sneak it back in here and knock down those diameters. We've got a whole crew of light people. Let me finish up some bread there. I notice the action of the tool. I, I drop the, the thread chaser in like that and I don't cut, but then I drop it down to make it cut. That way I don't poke a, a nice thread with the, uh, the cutter. That's a little more sophisticated uh, technique, but it does the job. That's it for threading. Perfect. Any questions? If you want to find the right speed for a larger piece, let's see. Say the person uh, one of quarter inches, five and a half yep, inches. You can just take uh, the, 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 the circumference of uh, say five inches around. And do the math? Do the math and increase yep. the speed by yep. portionally. Yep. Yep, yep. That would do it. Uh, and you would have the same motion, the same same piece. Yep. Yep, yep. But I, I would t tell you that the larger this gets, the more difficult it's got. I've tried to do five inch diameter stuff and it, it was pretty pretty tough to do. But that's 16 threads. Yeah. Right. yeah, I was using a much coarser threader then. It was like, a, I had a eight. Would you think that the density of the wood would affect the speed of the motion? Harder wood, you know, it's hard to cut, it'll slow down. So, so it, I don't know if you could figure the same speed for every piece. Of you probably couldn't. No, nope. you never know until you try, and it's always worth a try. Well, thanks for watching, Wait, everybody. Somebody. Thank you. Thanks. Somebody saying hi. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike, thanks very much. I appreciate it. And Take you. Thanks for indulging the live stream. So, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Are you done streaming We're now? Watch this on yeah. YouTube now. Don't so that is that Facebook.